Hello and welcome. The shape of the U.S. race is finally clear. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump look set to be their party's nominees. The battle is joined and it's already turning nasty. The combative Trump has promised a radical change in American politics, and that sounds good to many people in America. Clinton, on the other hand, has promised continuity. But that's not the kind of campaign platform that gets a lot of voters excited. This presidential campaign could be one of the most brutal in modern American history. That's our topic today on Quadriga, and we're going to talk about it with three people who watch U.S. politics very closely. It's a pleasure to welcome Christiana Meyer. She is a correspondent for the morning show of the German public network ARD, and she formerly reported for ARD from Washington. She says, we look with shock and no awe at a U.S. campaign where many people follow a man who would be fired from any school for his hateful, racist, and aggressive remarks. The last thing the world needs is Donald Trump in the White House. And it's a pleasure to welcome Rika Havatz. She works as an online editor at Sight Online, and she writes about U.S. politics and the current presidential election. She says one of the biggest challenges for Hillary Clinton in this race is to convince voters who feel that the American dream is dead, that her conventional qualities as a candidate matter more than Donald Trump's populism. And a warm welcome as well to Eric Kirschbaum. He's originally from New York, now works as a correspondent for the Los Angeles Times in Berlin. He says there's a lot of anger and frustration in the United States and in Europe, and it manifests itself in surprisingly strong support for anti-establishment candidates like Trump, Sanders, and also like Hofer and Le Pen. But it's hard to imagine Americans electing anyone but Clinton in November. Eric Kirschbaum, this race has been so full of surprises that I have to at least put the question, can we really be sure that it's going to be Clinton against Trump when it uh, comes to the general election? Or is it possible that there could be more surprises at store, in store at the party's conventions in July? Well, after all the surprises we've had, it looks like it will be Trump versus Clinton. There could be last minute surprises, but it's really, really unlikely. Clinton, Clinton got enough delegates with the wins in California the other day. Um, it would take a miracle to to prevent Trump from being the nominee, so it looks like Clinton versus Trump in November. Even though Trump is once again alienating the party bosses, the party elite, uh, the, uh, the people he had tried so hard to curry favor with lately, like Paul Ryan, who of course is majority uh, speaker in the House and uh, who has now said uh, Trump's latest remarks are racist, but he thinks he probably will vote for him. It is remarkable that Trump, in a moment he needs to be uniting his party around him, is just causing more division by attacking a judge. And that's something that went a bit too far, calling a judge a Mexican. Um, it just raised all kinds of ghosts that Trump doesn't really need right now. And a lot of Americans, sort of in the middle of the road, are a bit frightened when politicians and would-be presidents start attacking the judi judiciary. It was a total own goal for Trump, and it's not going to do him any, any good. Christiana Meyer, Hillary Clinton would be the first woman president of the U.S. She is the first female uh, nominee for president. Um, she was celebrating that very openly uh, this week, but not uh, all that many Americans, or perhaps not as many as one might expect, are celebrating with her and supporting her. Why is that? Ha, good question. Yeah, it's probably because she is regarded as the person who stands for establishment. And that seems to be a bad thing in America, obviously, because so many people seem to be unhappy with the established politics. And it falls back on her that he's, she has been in power for a long time. I mean, she has the experience Trump doesn't have. And that doesn't seem to be to her advantage, which is kind of interesting to watch. On the other hand, uh, many women, obviously, and, and many immigrants are really behind her. And I think she's got a very good chance to actually succeed, even though she comes across as maybe a little bit, uh, maybe not as warm as people would like her to be. But then again, you don't go drinking beer and coffee with a candidate, right? That really surprised me last the last few weeks I was in New York and California, how unenthusiastic people are about yeah. Hillary Clinton. I'm really surprised by that. I would have thought there'd be more excitement about a woman candidate, first woman president, but there's not there. There's no there's no real buzz for Hillary right now. But do you think, Christiana Meyer, that could change now that the general election phase is starting? And in other words, can she also win over the young people who supported uh, Bernie Sanders? 
I think that's absolutely crucial. I mean, obviously, they're trying to nudge Sanders into um, behind her. So if he would uh, more or less give up and then say, all right, I'm going to support her, and if he can get some of his issues across, for example, education, very important issue for young people. And uh, if he doesn't come across as the old grumpy old man who, who is not uh, able to give up, if all that happens, I think there could be more enthusiasm for Hillary Clinton. That ha This has been kind of divided between, obviously, the young people and the older people. So I'm, I'm rather optimistic, actually. Lucia Havertz, you mentioned uh, people in America who feel that the American dream is dead in that opening statement that I quoted. Of course, those are the people to whom both both Sanders and Trump have been appealing. Trump, of course, is seen by many of those as an outsider with a fresh and authentic point of view and as a self-made man. But in fact, he's neither. No, of course he's not, but he's very smart in appealing to people that have, I think, um, a lot of frustration and anger. Um, they are frustrated with the politicians in Washington, D.C. He appeals to people that are older, that are male, that are white, that had the American dream in their mind that they can have one job in their lifetime, buy a house, buy a car, uh, support their children through college, and then that's it. But that life in America is over. There is no longer the American dream they wish for. And Donald Trump, he just stands there and say, well, if you vote for me, I'm bringing the American dream back. I'm bringing back the 80s, which is not going to happen. But he He's so smart in doing so, and so he's appealing to a very certain, I think, demographic, which will not be there in future elections to come. So this is his shot, and he's doing it very well. So but this happens just exactly like that in Germany, in France, everywhere disenfranchised people who are going for the easy answers. So it's really easy answers for very complicated questions, political questions. And um, I think it is obviously very easy to follow a person who comes across like that, you know, oh, when you don't realize what the world is really all about. Well, and, and he also says, well, you're afraid, and if you vote for me, all your fears are going to get away. And I think the American society has become a very afraid society. They've been, like, afraid of terror, afraid of uh, different nations, different people, their next-door neighbor, African-Americans. I mean, there's a lot of fear in the society, I believe, and I talk to a lot of people there and they're all afraid of so many things and he stands there and say, well, I'm not afraid of anyone or anything and if you vote for me, I'm going to be the strong person in the White House. But here's something very puzzling. Many are disillusioned with the politicians in Washington. They say they, they are lying, they are promising things they don't deliver. The fact is, Trump has promised lots of things he didn't deliver. He started a school for real estate brokers where there has been clear fraud and that has been reported upon, and yet nothing seems to stick. His supporters stick with him, um, despite the fact that he, that he has been shown to be telling lies. How, how can that be? Yeah, I'm surprised by that as well, but I think it is, has been reported, but I don't know if the people that uh, support him necessarily are reading uh, the big piece in the New York Times or the LA Times on what he has done wrong, and then there's our outlets like Fox News who are like, just giving him airtime and airtime and airtime, and I think it's also part of the problem is the media that has been not very good in reporting on what he has promised and not uphold to, what he has said, what, what he didn't do, and so I think part of what we have to see now is a very much more critical media landscape and like a civil society in America said that says, well, we cannot vote for Donald Trump if we want to uplift to what we have established, like uh, equality for minorities, equality for um, gay people. All, all that issues are so much important and they're so on the line. So I think we need to stand up and address that more and make people hear that. One thing is for sure, the media have uh, been keen to report uh, some of the more outrageous statements that have been made by Donald Trump. Let's take a look. Hillary Clinton has to go to jail, okay? She has to go to jail. I will leave it to the psychiatrist to explain his affection for tyrants. Hillary Clinton is a weak person. Hillary Clinton is totally scripted. He is temperamentally unfit to hold an office that requires knowledge, stability, and immense responsibility. Instead of saying crooked Hillary, which is a very accurate description, I wonder if I could say, you know, remember, lion, lion. We all know the tools Donald Trump brings to the table, bragging, mocking, composing nasty tweets. She does not look presidential, that I can tell you. She does not. 
This is not a president. I believe the person the Republicans have nominated for president cannot do the job. So, Eric Kirschbaum, Harry, Hillary Clinton talked there about the tools that Donald Trump brings to the table. He has made it clear that among those tools will be vicious, vicious attacks. He is not afraid to hit below the belt. He has done it plenty in the past. He has indicated he's perfectly happy, for example, to make Bill Clinton's past affairs grist for his mill. Won't Hillary Clinton be held to a different standard can she really fight with the same kind of weapons, or will she be at a disadvantage in this kind of what could become really a, a, a mud wrestling match? Well, if it stays nasty like this, she will have a problem, but she's already shown that she's going to take on Trump where he's most weak, where his lack of knowledge of world affairs. She gave a really good speech last week um, about foreign policy that went down really well. We can't forget that Trump won more votes in the Republican primary than any other Republican before. He's got a lot of people on his side. I mean, um, people in America, to always complain, oh, only 50% of the people vote. Now there's a much higher turnout, and now we see where these people who never voted before are voting. So maybe it was better that voter turnout was lower. But So Trump has pulled it off. But things that were working for him in the past, winning these voters in the primary, could hurt him in the general election because he's got to win these middle-of-the-road voters. And he's behind in so many states um, that it looks right now like an easy win for the Democrats if, unless Trump gains 10 percentage points across the board. Clinton, as, uh, as Eric just pointed out, uh, did, in fact, make quite a strong speech last week. Clearly, she had been doing some thinking, some training, and also undoubtedly had a lot of consultants at her side telling her or working with her on how to address the kind of polemics uh, that, that Trump has been throwing her way. She is a very seasoned politician, Christiana Maya. She has been through some very tough tests in her very lengthy career. Do you think that will stand her in good stead? Will she be able to put up and with and perhaps even trounce these kind of attacks? I'm pretty sure she will because she already showed that she can keep her calm, you know. She stays rational, whereas he goes out of his way to, to be nasty and awful and horrible. She is just composed. She doesn't use bad language like he does. So um, I think she, if she attacks him, I mean, that there's, one, that there's his personality on the one side, which you really think is very easy to attack. And on the other side, there's this inexperience in political matters. So she has a lot of things to go for. And when you're talking about the middle of the road uh, voter, you know, the, the middle people, they don't like that when their children hear nasty language on television. I'm totally surprised how the Americans can actually put up with that. I mean, if you would use that language in, in your normal circumstances, your normal life, you know, you'd be, you would not go to a normal school. You know, people would certainly expel you and you and the parents would be called in. And um, It's getting so, old with Trump. I mean, it's been yeah. entertaining and exciting for a while, something completely different, but it's going to get old by November. And I think you're right. I think Trump is going to have a hard time with this, this, this crazy, profane, vulgar message. People are getting tired of it or will get tired of it by I November. Think so. on, the old class, yeah. on the other hand, we can have it. Trump has had a very decided advantage in media coverage. Every nasty tweet that he sends out gets picked up by the mainstream media and then retweeted and uh, discussed. And, and in fact, the president of CBS went so far as to say Trump is bad for the country, but it's very, very good for CBS. They have had revenues like never before, thanks to all of the interest in Donald Trump. What the media themselves need to be doing going forward to, in fact, create a level playing field here, or won't there be one? Well, I think it's difficult because on the one hand, you want to report on everything that is going on, and that is your job as a journalist. And so, but I think what the Huffington Post, for example, did, they just like, uh, beneath every article on Donald Trump, they say um, Donald Trump has been uh, uh, making racist, racist remarks and has been um, unpolite. So they state very clearly where their editorial opinion on him is. I don't know if that is the way to go. I think you have to be more rational in covering the election. I mean, this is a very nasty race and it's going to be a lot more nasty uh, until November. I think it's going to be very interesting to see the first national debate where Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump be up on one stage for the first time debating on issues. I think that 
that is going to be very interesting to see because Donald Trump cannot be as vulgar as he has been. So I think that is going to be very interesting. And maybe... You don't think he'll talk about the size of Hillary Clinton's hands? Well, <laughs> we, we hope we, he doesn't, but, I mean, you can never be sure about him. I mean, he can pull up anything, apparently. But I think, coming back to your question about the media, I think sometimes it might help to just take a step back before you just retweet, tweet, Facebook something, just for the attention and just for the audience reach. I mean, it's just... But it's, isn't it... Isn't it America itself that brought that onto itself? I mean, having elections as a big show that is run on the media as a show event, almost with all that money involved and everybody who has to go out of their way to attract attention. So in, in a way, it, there you got a person who, has, who delivers the big show, you know, there he is. And obviously they're cynical enough to say, OK, the rates are great, you know, let's go for it. That's one side of how perhaps the U.S. brought this on itself. Another side, Eric Kirschbahn, might be polarization, both in the sense of polarization in Washington that meant that in eight years all the parties did in Congress was fight with each other, mm -hmm. leading to the disillusion. And secondly, polarization of the media, meaning even if there's critical reporting, a lot of those Trump supporters maybe aren't going to see it. Yeah, I mean, the millennials get their information from different platforms, from Facebook and Twitter and things like that. And... Yeah, it's a total different race this time. And there is this polarization that you talk about. It's it's hard to break through. That's why a candidate like Sanders, I think, would have had a very difficult time if he were to become president because he'd have a very hostile Congress, whereas Clinton is somebody that could hopefully work with a, with a Congress dominated by the Republicans and at least get th some things accomplished. Um, it's a crazy election. It's unlike anything we've seen for a long time. But the Democrats have won every election except 2004, going all the way back to 1988. The Republicans only won one. So the electoral... Um, advantage, the Electoral College advantage that the Democrats have is, is pretty pretty enormous. It's something that um, people who are worried about Trump should really think about, that it's not one big election like in Germany. It's 50 individual elections, and the Democrats um, have a pretty good head start at this point. I what totally agree, but I think it's very easy to say, well, the Democrats are going to make it. I think it's so dangerous that Donald Trump even came that close or yeah. might come that close to the White House, and we don't know what happens until November. And uh, I think if there's one major tag in Europe or even in America, we don't want to think about that, but just uh, just imagine one big terrorist attack. I think that would just give him a major <laughs> advantage. Let's briefly think about what a Donald Trump in the White House might mean in terms of foreign policy. Of course, Hillary Clinton's uh, presumptive advantage is that she had experience as Secretary of State. But Donald Trump did hold what he uh, called a major foreign policy address recently and more or less outlined where he would go, although it left many people uh, somewhat in doubt. Uh, let's take a closer look. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, shunned by the international community because of his nuclear development program. But Donald Trump says he'd be prepared to talk to Kim. North Korea recently praised Trump as a wise politician. Trump also says he'd like to have good relations with Moscow and Beijing. We desire to live peacefully and in friendship with Russia and China. We have serious differences with these two nations and must regard them with open eyes. But we are not bound to be adversaries. Clinton slams Trump's foreign policy statements as dangerously incoherent. He praises dictators like Vladimir Putin and picks fights with our friends. Perhaps Trump can use these new male bonding efforts to resolve long-standing international disputes. So is he a hawk or is he a dove, Christiana Meyer? Who knows? I don't know if he knows, um, because obviously he has no experience, he has no idea about foreign politics. Uh, what he said is, for example, that um, in NATO, they don't want to have, keep the leading role, all the other countries would have to pay more. So there come all these remarks and you don't, know, don't really know where does it come from. Is it anything has thought through or not, or is it coming from his stomach basically you know so um, it's a worrying thought that he should be the one who actually holds the button yes as hillary clinton has sense. said uh, who would have the codes the nuclear codes eric kirschbaum according to trump in that major foreign policy address i mentioned um he has written a book called the art of the deal and he says what we need to do is take a more transactional approach to things you have to be ready to walk away from the table and then you can get people to do what you want is that a clear strategy that you think would bring gains vis-a-vis -vis, let's say china or russia 
No, it's a dangerous strategy. It might work for a businessman, but as president, where there's a lot of countries looking at the United States for leadership, it's a really scary thing. He's already upset financial markets by talking about renegotiating treasuries and things like that. The United States treasuries have been the most reliable place for foreign, foreign investors to put their money for centuries. And he's he threatens to mess that up with just a few uh, unconsidered words. So he, he really, as you said, don't, doesn't have an idea. And it, it, it's a scary prospect for a lot of, a lot of America's allies. Let's talk about the U.S. and Europe uh, going forward. Both, both candidates have actually said that they would perhaps expect more from Europe, at least in regard to contributions to NATO, contributions to supporting defense within, say, Eastern Europe, and, and so on. Europe, on the other hand, is often looking to the U.S. with a mix of resentment of U.S. power and at the same time wishing somebody would fix the Middle East. What do you think? Would either of these candidates do things significantly differently? Would either of them bring the U.S. back into the role of world policemen? Well, with Trump, I would agree. You, you just cannot tell. You cannot tell what he's going to do. He doesn't seem to have, like, smart advisors. Um, we don't know who he would pick as a vice president, which would be a very interesting thing to look at if we already knew what he would have in mind for that. Uh, Hillary, on the other hand, I think is very reliable. She would be a very reliable partner for Europe and the European Union. And, I mean, it's always like a give and take. And I think if the if U.S. says, well, um, Europe has to give more in regard to NATO, you can question whether the U.S. is doing enough regarding the refugee crisis. So I think there's going to be a a lot of talks and negotiation, but with Hillary Clinton, this is going to be more reliable. I mean, Trump's call for Europe to do more with NATO to, to spend 2% of their GDP is actually a pretty good thing. That's one of the things Trump has said that does make sense, that in Europe they have been dragging their feet. The U.S. has been been carrying the ball for NATO for a long, long time, and, and European countries like Germany just talk about doing more for NATO, but they don't. So. Trump is thinking out of the box a bit on some issues, and of all the things Trump has come up with, that's one that did catch my eye as something that makes yeah, sense. What caught has... my eyes is that he likes, he's already looking forward to his talks with Putin. Mm. So you wonder, you know, are they going to join the sauna together, or what, what are they going to do? I mean, is that a level where he thinks he's right? So apart from the NATO thing, you're right on that one, of course, and other people have said that before, of course, that the 2% we're supposed to contribute, we don't contribute. But... Why um, not? Why is Europe dragging its feet on NATO all the oh, time? Oh, that's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have time for that, but um, I think it will be difficult to change, but it will probably gradually change. Mm -hmm. probably. You say that Hillary Clinton would definitely be more reliable, but in fact, one of her advisors has said that a key motto for Hillary Clinton is, when in doubt, act. Couldn't that lead to a more activist military role that in fact might be uncomfortable? Uh, could be. Um, I think what helped Hillary Clinton in some regard is that Bernie Sanders has been in the race for so long. I mean, he made her a better candidate and more from a European standpoint, left-wing candidate. She had to address more left-wing issues. So my hope kind of is that the Democratic Party and President Hillary Clinton would not forget totally about all of those aspects. But of course, she has shown that she is a strong uh, she has a strong voice on foreign policy and that she is ready to act. I mean, we all remember the picture when uh, Osama bin Laden was uh, killed and she was sitting right next to uh, Obama. And, I mean, she's ready to act and she voted on the Iraqi war, so we don't have to forget about that. So here comes the moment that all presenters love and guests uh, hate, which <laughs> is that I'm going to ask you to give us a forecast who you think is going to win this election. And you're, you don't have to just give me one name. You are allowed to uh, uh, explain for one or two sentences <laughs> why you've made your choice. Eric Kirschbaum. Well, I think Trump's going to have a hard time even finding a vice president candidate. Some people have already said they're not interested. But I think Clinton's going to win and it's going to be a landslide, a very big victory. I totally agree. I think she might not be loved, but she's respected, she's reliable, and that will actually car carry her through eventually. So she's going to win. I have to agree. Hillary Clinton is going to make it. Her conventional qualities will reassure the American public that she is a good president. So what could change that calculus? All three of you have uh, given <laughs> your vote for Clinton. What, if anything, could lead to a different outcome? If she has a big legal problem in the fall with the emails, the Secretary of State, if, if she ends up in court and has some problems with that, that could be a, a big spanner in the works for her. 
Um, if Bernie Sanders doesn't do the right thing and bow out gracefully, that could also cause problems. If the left-wing voters of Bernie Sanders don't rally around Clinton, that could be a problem. If Trump were to suddenly get his act together and, and start sounding more presidential and unify his party, it could be a, it could be a closer race. But it doesn't look like it's going to happen right now. So you mentioned all the reasons already, but I think yeah, if Trump would change his personality all of a sudden, that might be dangerous. I think all the other points, yes, dangerous, but probably will not cost her the victory. I think changing his personality would help him, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> and uh, as I mentioned before, I think if we would have to see a major terrorist attack, I think that would play in his favor. I don't think that made him necessarily win the White House, but that would make it much closer. Thank you very much to all of, uh, all of you for being with us uh, here on Quadriga. And thanks to all of you out there for tuning in. Uh, hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.